Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie and if you are new here, hello and welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing for lots more diamond painting content. And if you are back as always, welcome back. Today I'm here with a big reveal and post review of one of my recently completed diamond painting projects. It is, yes, a bit hidden from you because I just, I need to have the moment of revealing this beautiful kit to you guys. So um, this is a diamond painting kit called Outside the Sweet Shop. It's by the artist Helcorio. And and is from the shop Diamond Art Studio UK, obviously located in the UK. This was actually my very first purchase from this shop and it caught my eye in particular specifically because I saw that it had 197 colors. Now I've completed a couple of other kits in the past here on my channel. Um, that have had really high color counts above 200 and were from other diamond painting companies. And I find the process and the challenge of taking on a project like that to be a lot of fun. And I feel that it pulls in a different part of my brain. And um, I find that a lot of you guys enjoy that sort of challenge as well. And I like to take the opportunity to share my thought process with you guys, the sort of prepping and then working on a project and then sharing with you what the finished effect looks like. So you can decide for yourself with all this information, is this something Thing you want to take on yourself. Now, I have done a couple of videos dedicated to this kit, including things like the unboxing, the kitting up process, where I really deep dive into um, and, and kit up along with you. That's putting all the diamonds into these storage containers. Um, and I also did a progress update video in which I also shared a number of tips and tricks for working on a large max color count canvas like this one. Now, this canvas, the drill field itself, the image, is 60 by 80 centimeters. It has square diamonds and like I said, 197 colors. This is my logbook, and you can see here's the original artwork for you guys. Obviously from the Diamond Art Studio UK website. This was on the sticker sheet that they sent with this kit. Uh, this was my 131st finish of all time and my 25th of 2023. And then I always write notes in here about things like what I loved about the kit, any challenges I ran into, and any notes that I have as well. Um, so I have a lot to, th I love a lot of thoughts to share, but first I want to go ahead and reveal to you guys what's, what this looks like finished. And I hope that we can just enjoy this breathtaking moment together because spoiler alert, I am obsessed and I think that it turned out ridiculously beautifully. So let me go ahead. Let's move these containers out of the way. You guys can see this is outside the sweet shop <laughs> and she is gorgeous oh my gosh can we talk about the pure rainbow beauty of this canvas i am unbelievably happy with how this has turned out um i'm gonna pop up the original artwork for here with you guys it's gonna have the watermark on there from diamond art studio uk of course but just so you can see and kind of compare like there's the original artwork and then here is the diamond painting version and I just am incredibly impressed. Now, past Max Color projects that I've worked on, um, it's the, the high number of colors has suited the artwork, but not nearly as much as as that high color count suits this artwork. This has a level of detail and a level of coherency that I did not experience with past projects. Again, those were from different companies. And I want I should just, I just want to talk about this on its own truly. But it is worth noting that I think that this truly stands head and shoulders above, above that. And, and a lot of that I think comes from the source material. Helcorio has some incredibly beautiful artwork licensed with Diamond Art Studio UK. Much of it has been incredibly popular and sold out very, very quickly, including this one. They are planning on continuously restocking it. Uh, so be sure you're following them on their social media so you can stay up to date with what's happening as far as when the next round of restocks are coming in. As of the time of this filming, this may change by the time this video goes up, this kit is available for pre-order, uh, as are some other kits by Helcorio. Um, and there are at least one or two other Max Color Count kits that are available. And honestly, I'd be shocked if we didn't see more because these have been wildly, wildly popular. Now, let's talk about some of the things that I always talk about in my reviews, which is just the overall experience. And this is aside from 
the really special things about this canvas, uh, which is that that 197 color count. So a few different things. Um, I found that the canvas material was nice to work on um, and that it's holding the drills well. I thought that the glue was really nice. Again, that's holding the drills well. And um, I haven't had any diamonds falling off or anything like that. The diamond quality was really excellent. I did have plenty left over in every single color. I do want to note, I do want to note that there was one particular color that I'd actually noticed this when I was kidding up I, because I had it with similar, um, similar sets of diamonds that came in zip. They all came in Ziploc bags, resealable bags, um, and had numbers on them that indicated the number of ounces that were included. And I noticed when I was kidding up that this symbol, this color had fewer, like visibly fewer, uh, diamonds than other colors that had, were supposed to have had the same number of ounces or grams. Um, but before I had the chance to even contact Diamond Art Studio UK about it, they actually had sent out an email to me and to anyone else that had purchased this um, this first run of this kit saying that they had been made aware that there was an error with the amount that was sent out in this color and that they were already sending out replacements. So they are already aware. They were really prompt about sending out those replacements. And I did still have, I think there's maybe 100 left in there. So after, you know, including the replacements that were sent out. So uh, much appreciated for that, but otherwise it was totally fine. Um, the drill quality was pretty good, but I'll tell you what, these 310, these black diamonds, they were a little trash prone. Um, I didn't save the trash drills, like drills that had tabs sticking off the side or anything like that. I didn't save those to show you, um, but this color certainly had a lot. I'm not really holding that against the company for a couple of key reasons. One, look at how much was left over. <laughs> plenty, plenty left over. And two, you guys, you know what? This, this DMC 310 is just well known for being trash prone. It just is. So <laughs> for any number of reasons. So I just, I'm not holding that against, against the company. It's just an FYI. You see an empty container here because this actually was full of 310 as well. And I went through that, that whole thing and then got into the second container. Um, so that was good. The, the printing on the canvas was very clear, which I really, really, really appreciated in particular because, um, I'll show you here in just a bit, but there were several sets of symbols that were very similar to one another. And I'm very grateful that the canvas printing was clear enough that I didn't have any trouble making out the differences between those symbols. Uh, I'll pop up a picture here on the screen so you can see an example of this. And I also will have shown it to you in a few different places in my progress update video that I shared with you guys just pretty recently. Um, I'll link to the playlist for this project below, by the way. Um, and then in addition to that, you guys, I think that the customer service and just the overall uh, communication style and approach of this shop is really excellent. Uh, this is the first kit that I purchased from the shop and I found as I sort of, I don't remember how I stumbled across this shop to be honest with you guys. Um, I, I follow a lot of diamond painting shops in the community and um, it was like, I said, this is the one that caught my eye. That's when I started really following along with them on Facebook and everything. And I just have noticed a really consistent pattern of excellent communication and customer service and being really, um, receptive to feedback and seeking out customer feedback and opinions on how the shape they should approach things like pre-orders and i really really love that about a company because that's one thing that you you can't outsource is your customer service and your communication so um, i know that's equally as important to a lot of you guys so i want to make sure that you know that i think that they have excellent customer service and you know business practices and everything like that um so anyway, and then the rendering, which we already talked about the rendering. <laughs> I'm really happy with the rendering. Uh, the confetti level on this kit was very, very high, which is what you would expect from a really high color count kit. Confetti is when you have tons of color changes in a small area. Again, I showed you some really good examples in my progress update video, but if I have a good picture, I'll insert it here for you too. But that meant that this project took a while. I don't know if you noticed in my logbook, but I started this on June 18th and finished it just under a month later. 
Now, full disclosure, I have had other projects going on at the same time. Uh, I was, uh, with the exception of the past week, I have always had other projects going concurrently. It was just this past week when I just had a few columns left, I felt like I got some laser focus and really wanted to finish it. Um, but I will tell you that just generally speaking, this kit took me probably three to four times as long to complete as in terms of hours as an equivalent kit in this same size with square drills just with a more normal level of confetti that would come from a more standard level of confetti and color blocking and color count um so just an fyi a project like this is going to be a bigger undertaking but i feel like the payoff is really really wonderful so I'm going to bring you down. I want to show you a couple of different really pretty areas on this canvas that I loved and some other notes. Like there were some areas that did have some color blocking, believe it or not. Uh, but, and then I want to show you some of the symbols again and how I organize my diamonds. Uh, um, just so I can share what my thoughts are now that I've completed this kit and what that's been like. So up close, you can see that the image does look a little bit more pixelated, and I think that's really completely normal and to be expected um, with a kit like this one and with diamond paintings in general. They're designed to be uh, viewed from a viewing distance and not up closer like this. But we have, I just thought this came out so well. Uh, this person that's coming in through the rain that's entering the sweet shop and this kind of counter that's happening over here. I hope these kind of stained glass pillars and planters over here looked absolutely gorgeous. Easily the most confetti heavy areas of this piece, believe it or not, was this look through this window. There were so many color variations all in here. Even the lighter colors you see in here is actually a huge variety of different light pastel colors, as are the colors down here. So these were probably the most confetti heavy areas or, and up here at the top, these, I'll tell you, no, I'll, I'll take it back this section which is kind of this sort of balcony and railing that's going above the sweet shop this about did me in pure confetti these sections were the ones that look, took me the absolute longest to complete and um yeah <laughs> there was a lot to them but i think that they came out really beautifully there was a little bit of color blocking in some areas of the umbrellas and you guys if you notice as we're looking at this piece even in the confetti heavy areas um you'll notice that a lot of similar color families are close together. I think that this really made it make sense that I had organized my diamonds in the way that I have, which was by color. I'm gonna show you those in just a moment. Um, a kit like this that's very kind of rainbowy based and it's really keeping a lot of those similar color and shades together. I think organizing by color can really pay off. And in this case, it really, really did. Uh, this was the side that I started on, actually. I started on the right column at the bottom and worked my way up. And this was a really fun little surprise. I, When I was looking at the piece as a whole, I didn't realize there's this really pretty patch of like pastel going on up here um, that in the original artwork is almost like a little bit of a lens flare, it looks like. Uh, but that was really pretty and I thought came out really well. My decision to start over here on the right hand side and this column was really intentional because when I looked at the canvas when I first unboxed it, I noticed immediately that the left hand side had a decent amount of color blocking in several areas, which we'll hop over there in just a moment. And I thought deliberately, I'm going to start over there because then um, once I get towards the end of the canvas, I'll feel like I have some more momentum and speed and it's going to feel I think a lot more rewarding as opposed to over here where it starts right off the bat with lots of confetti. So this is the first section I started with. I cut, um, I cut the plastic, I sectioned it off with washi tape and cut it into 10 by 10 centimeter sections. And I thought that was a really doable size. Any bigger, I don't think would have been a good idea, especially in some of those confetti heavy areas. But I had a reaction that I have almost every time I take on a big or a, a particularly challenging like takes more of my brain power kind of project. So I've worked on this very first section and uh, it took me a really long time just to finish that first section. As soon as I finished it, I was like, this is gonna be too much work. What have I gotten myself into? I don't know if I wanna do this. I just wanna go back to my regular projects. What was I thinking? Like I said, this happens regularly so i didn't take it too seriously um i just thought you know what that's okay here's what i do is what i usually do and works well is i i step back from the project because this is this is one of the reasons we i suggest having other projects going at the same time as big ones like this one 
I took a little break, went back to my other projects, and then I, a couple of days later, I kind of look at this one out of the corner of my eye and go, yeah, okay, we can we can go back to this and try it again. Did the second section, went a little bit smoother. I started to recognize some of the symbols and it just, it, 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 I, I found my rhythm. <laughs> and so I'm always going to recommend that when you take on something new and challenging, that you give yourself the chance to find your rhythm or, you know, something like that. Now, as I said, we'll kind of move over here and I'll show you where there's some more color blocking. I do want to point out though, that easily the areas that I got the most comments on that people really seem to be enjoying when I would post progress updates on Instagram is the look of their reflections on the street. And I have to agree, the, the way that it's charted is gorgeous and I think really looks like the original artwork. And it really does look like, you know, it's rainy pavement with the glow reflecting of it and kind of distributing the light. Over here, you can see we have these big areas of 310, this black color. So I did get to color block through here. It was wonderful and glorious, though I was a little bit, I had a little hang up with um, some of the quality on some of these diamonds. I was finding myself having to pick around some trash, which was not the end of the world, but I still I still did get to color block through, through those areas. So. Now I want to grab my my color trays and show you guys um, kind of what it was like to work on these. So I did organize by color. This is kind of my yellows, oranges, browns, and blacks. And I am going to highly, highly recommend organizing your diamonds in a similar fashion. Um, this kit, like I said, is highly rainbow based and uh, sorting it by color made it so easy because it was like, okay, now I'm working in some reds. Um, now I'm working in some, some pinks, that sort of thing. Uh, I would maybe, if I were starting back over and I were going into it fresh, I would do things just a little bit differently because of how now I know how the colors tend to be kind of grouped on the canvas. For example, I would try to organize things so that the purples actually got looped in with the blues, as well as there were some grays in the first tray that I wanted to keep. I would have rather kept in here after all as well. Um, and then some of these kind of olivey green colors actually kind of belonged more with the browns than anything. But once I got to a certain point, and, and I think this is probably the case for a lot of people when they're working on a high color count project, is you just kind of build that muscle memory and you just know when you go to look for a color, you're like, okay, it's in this tray. And I always, when I was working on a section, what I would do um, is I would, let me show you. I would actually set the trays in front of me the same exact way every single time. So if this is the section I'm working on, I always have this tray with the greens and the blues kind of right above it. And then this one kind of at an angle with the yellows, oranges, and browns over on this side. And then this one with the pinks, purples, and reds um, over on this side. And so I just got really used to like reaching various areas for a symbol. And I got into that rhythm by the end of the first column, honestly. Uh, so. I'm gonna be a huge advocate of organizing mostly by color. Uh, there are other ways to organize. I, I organize differently for past projects where I would put all of the numbers together and all the triangle shapes together and all of the arrows together, that sort of thing. That's completely valid, but I will just tell you from my own personal experience that organizing by color was a huge time saver and very, very efficient. It also helped with certain things like, let me show you uh, some of our are similar symbols. How, how many times can you say that? Uh, so we had several sets. I'm going to show you some examples here. This is just an FYI. Uh, so we had these very similar. I have to give the, the company credit though. The printing on the canvas, very clear. I can make out this little line really clearly every single time. So I have to give them credit for that. Of course, uh, we also had, let's see, some less egregious ones like these. And this is where I always share the tip of, um, especially when you're working on a bigger canvas like this, you're not, if you're like me anyway, you're not always gonna be working on it oriented right side up. I find myself flipping the canvas, sometimes working on it sideways, sometimes working on it upside down. And so what I will do is if I'm working on the canvas upside down, just to make sure I have the right symbol, I will flip the containers, whatever direction the canvas is that I'm working on. And then I can just double and triple check, okay, I've grabbed the right colors. Um, so there were those. I know there were more. I just, I did get good at differentiating. 
after a little while. Uh, we had some like, we have these two. We have these triangles. Again, this is another another case where it's like just orient your canvas. Make sure it's oriented the same way. Now, these colors were similar enough, or sorry, these two colors, similar enough that I, I would have mixed them up and you literally would never tell. <laughs> it would have been completely fine. Uh, these ended up being organized differently. And this is one of the reasons I mentioned grouping these with maybe the browns instead. But we have these two arrows. They were in different trays. But again, I ended up with muscle memory, so I didn't feel like I suffered for not having them in the same tray. Um, I kind of see the symbols here. Some of these were a little tricky to read, the black symbols on dark blue backgrounds, but not that bad. And especially, I don't use a light pad, but you could, you know? And then in this tray, yeah, some of these dark purple, the black on the dark purple were a little tricky to read. Um these two very similar on the canvas this one just looked like a smaller dot and this one just obviously looked like a bigger dot on the canvas so those are kind of the culprits but yeah so those are mostly just FYI's I'm not gonna say this is like a bad thing because again the printing on the canvas is really clear now here's one thing that I did notice I'm gonna point out just because I'm being really thorough I thought this was kind of unusual, but I don't think you notice it when you're looking at the canvas. You'll notice that there's a couple of times where I put a slash in the washi tape because I was worried that was causing an issue. And here's what's happening. You don't really see it from this side, but in a couple of spots on this canvas, um, there is just a slight, there you can see it. There's a slight fold that doesn't really want to flatten out all the way. And when I was working on this section, it actually was kind of pulling the drills toward each other. And it wasn't an issue with the glue, I don't think. You can cut, yeah, no, you're not really going to be able to see it. Um, it really is laying flat. The drills are not popping or anything like that, but there was a spot right there. And then there was, was there one? I thought there was one down here too. Yeah, there it is. Again, you can kind of just see it where it's just a little a little pull in the fabric. And you see, can see where I slashed the washi because I was like, is that tugging on it at all? And it's not. But again, those diamonds, they're laying pretty flat. If you're looking for it, you might notice just a slight, slight tiny groove there. But it's poured glue and the canvas is kind of that short lint material. I really think it's going to be fine. And I feel like it has flatten itself out as it's laying here um, and as it's been just sitting completed. So this is another one of those things I'm not going to count as like, oh no, this is a bad thing. Um, I did find that the plastic cover was, um, it was, it was thicker and then there were areas, you might've seen it in the unboxing where it was a little tricky to try to pull the plastic cover off. Um, it was really wanting to, to stick to the glue pretty hard, but I didn't see that it looked like it was warping the glue or anything like that. But anyway, just a, just a little note, but you guys, I love this kit. I'm incredibly happy with how it turned out. I'll bring you back out again here so you can see it all in its glory. But yeah, I, I am, I, I can give you a really confident thumbs up. Yes, this was amazing and excellent. Well worth the price point. Um, well worth all the, the work and the effort that goes into taking on a project of this scale. Um, I, I loved it. I found it really enjoyable to work on, really difficult to put down, which for me is definitely a sign um, of, of a good painting, at least for me. I want to enjoy the kits that I'm working on. I want to give you the caveat though. A kit like this is not for everyone. If you're hearing 197 colors, pure confetti, no, not my jam. That's completely fine. You know yourself. But if you're intrigued by the concept and thinking, you know, I kind of think I might want to give this a try. Which company should I try one from? I can tell you that I had a lovely experience working on Outside the Sweet Shop from this company. Like I said, they have one or two other kits from this artist, at least at the time, as of the time of this filming, that also have really high color count. So you have some options if you want to go and take a look and maybe place an order. If you don't live in the UK, you will pay international shipping, which is it is high that's just the name of the game when it comes to international shipping um i know the diamond art studio uk because this came up recently in, in my facebook group diamonds and emeralds 
Diamond Art Studio UK is, is actually losing money on international shipping because they just charge a flat rate. Um, and, and it is quite expensive. So it's just something to be aware of. And I want you to keep in mind that you can actually order multiple kits and it's just the one shipping rate. And so, you know, I, I ordered two kits next time I try, I'll probably try to do the same because that feels like then it kind of distributes the shipping cost of it. And keep in mind that anyone that lives outside of the United States, if they're ordering from shops that are based in the United States, they're paying high international shipping as well. It's just kind of something you get used to when you're ordering from out of the country, if they're not, you know, drop shipping, which Diamond Art Studio UK does not drop ship. So um, do keep that in mind, but let me know what you guys think. Is this the kind of project that you would try to take on yourselves? Or do you just like to kick back and observe and enjoy <laughs> vicariously through others? I am thrilled. I, I'm not sure how soon again I'll be working on another really high color count project, but this is a lot of fun. I definitely see myself buying another one from Diamond Art Studio UK and testing it out in the very near future. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm just going to sit and bask in, <laughs> in, in the satisfaction of finishing this beautiful, beautiful kit. So. I'll link to the playlist for this kit as well as other high color count projects that I've worked on in the past. If you'd like to take a look and see what my different approaches have been and get a better sense for, okay, is this something I want to try? Uh, thank you to Diamond Art Studio UK for making these really beautiful kits available to us and for giving the option of some uh, max color counts on some of these kits. I think that it suits it beautifully and I'm in love. So 10 out of 10, totally recommend. And uh, yeah, so you guys, if you wanna stay up to date with future diamond painting projects, including epic ones like this one, feel free to subscribe. I would love to have you. You can click the bell to be notified when I share new videos. And I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll chat with you in the next one. Bye.